Hi, I'm Peter Mezzett and welcome to Great Gardens. Today we're going to talk about decorations for the holidays. and We're going to focus in on the living things, the wreaths, the kissing balls, the centerpieces. And we're going to talk to Henry Schmidt who has years of experience with making these things and he'll tell you what you can make at home or what can be purchased for the holidays from your local garden center. So let's go. Hi, we're at the uh, holiday shop here at Western Nurseries as we call it and uh, this is where all the magic happens where we set up in back of our greenhouse and we make a lot of holiday decorations and Henry Schmidt has been doing it for Western Nurseries for 43 years as nobody knows more about holiday decorations than Henry. So I'm going to let Henry do a lot of talking but first I just want to ask you some general questions um, regarding the holidays and decorations. What do you find are some of the most popular decorations for the holidays, Henry? Well, I think people now are going into using everything. It's really a great time, I think, to prune your shrubs a little bit and get assorted greens. We try and use a lot of our own plant materials so it is fresh from yellow to hollies to boxwood and uh, all the different greens, fern spray, cypress, yeah. and some of the others, and that's what gives great texture. And many of these things, like the fern spray cypress, are available in your own yard, and we tend yes. to take cuttings from our nursery. Um, and you're working on a wreath right here. Um, why don't you tell us a little here bit about I've that? Here I've taken a basic balsam wreath, and I've inserted uh, arborvitae in here. There is white pine. I have some of this uh, fern spray cypress. And it depends on the effect that you would like. Uh, we're going to do a mixed green where it brightens things up like it does in every garden. It's a touch of yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't like yellow, uh, and it depends what additional things that can be added to it. But yellow just makes all the other greens pop if done uh, correctly. We also use Lakothaway and Boxwood, but when we use the broadleafed evergreens like Boxwood Lakothaway, I think at home you'd have to use wilt proof in on the holly. This would seal them and make them last a lot longer. Right. Even though uh, we use Crown and Glory, which isn't available to everybody. Okay. But wilt proof does the same thing. Same thing. And the base of these wreaths are usually, what are they, balsam? Balsam. Sometimes pine. Right. Sometimes bakwood, but most commonly a, balsam. A balsam wreath. And this is something that people can do here. themselves because you can buy these balsam wreaths right. and, and they just, come wrapped in wire. Right. And, and how are you doing it? We You're use using... a very hot glue and a glue pot that can take the skin right off of you, <laughs> uh, of course. But it, we use it because it does dry within 10 seconds. 10 seconds. And it's there. It's dry. See your front. You cannot pull that out. Look at that. Right I didn't there. realize it's that. It's hooked in it. As long as the wreath is dry. You gotta make you sure you don't get do it on it your on hands. Wet, yes, it will take the skin right off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we'll but people that. can get that product and yes. use that at home as well? Well, it's easier, but you can. You need a pot to do it. It needs to be kept at a certain temperature. Okay. If it's too low, it gets stringy. Okay. Otherwise, it works well. So, we I usually use know. the balsam back, and people can Correct. do this at home, which costs not that much, five, ten bucks. Right, depending and then all on the these, size wreath. Right, and then this is probably a 14 inch. That's a 10. 10? Oh, That's it's small. You go by the, the ring. Correct. Okay. The ring so size, not, not the outside. The outside size. All right, so a 10 inch wreath, five or ten bucks, and then really making it into a $50 wreath. Correct. Pretty easily by taking cuttings from yes. around your, your home. And then, of course, some people like it brighter, so we do have uh, balls, some natural tones for those that want it very golden. You're known we for your have, glitz and glamour. That's it. Well, you know, <laughs> a lot of people that decorate very softly and plainly, when it comes to the Christmas that they want to carry into New Year, this is the time for them to go all out. Right, right. Glitter it up. Make it seem. And if you have a big house and it's far from the road, you need this in order for this to be seen, whether right. it incorporates into the ribbon or not. Right. And even though you may have one ribbon on, a lot of people are decorating around Thanksgiving time. They can use one color ribbon. Uh, when it comes Christmas, you can change the bow to another for a fresh look. And New Year's, you can add a lot of pop by really going way out there. Now that you've brought up bows, I think that is one of the most appealing aspects of Christmas decorations, right. especially wreaths. And bow making is something you've done for 43 years. Yes. Why don't we talk to our viewers about 
how they can make a bow at home. All Maybe right. you could demonstrate that. Uh, they, I like to use wired ribbon. Can, could you put the wreath on? Sure. There too? And wired ribbon, of course, it is weatherproof, uh, and there's wire on both sides. Okay. And this is what holds the ribbon in place so that the rain won't tear it apart. So wired ribbon, is that something that people can find easily? Yes. Okay. We sell it. We yep. even make bows for people. You can see how stiff the yep. edge is. Yep. And this is, uh, depending on the size of the bow and the length of the tail, it takes an average of uh, three yards okay. to make a bow. A lot of people twist. I learned it to be uh, pinched. I think you get a fuller bow uh, if you pinch and gather than do the twist and you have more control over the shape of the bow. I, this will be uh, a little, so the outer petals are shorter. The inner petals, you can see, mm -hmm. are shorter in proportion and one overlayers the other. Why don't I just put that down there, okay. out of the way. Uh, this, uh, you try and match the edge. So I'm doing uh, three in back. And where I'm using the longest strings, this is probably about a four, four and a half yard bow. Okay. And you feel strongly about making your own bows. Talk to our viewers about I, that. Well, you can buy finished bows, but I they just don't compare. Fresh. Yes. And I know people take ribbon, and you can do it at home uh, as, you know, and people do re-iron it. Okay. Uh, but you can always tell when it has been re-ironed. It's not perky. Can you save a bow if it isn't bad? Yes. You can stuff this with tissue in here to keep it fluffy. Okay. But once it goes too flat, it uh, just loses its shape. And I have been a flower show judge for a long period of time, and we have had people that reuse ribbon that have lost from first place. The thing was deserving, but you could see all the creases in the ribbon. You can see what was bended and flat. And you'll put that comment right on there. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And that can do. And you want to pull it as tight as you can so it. Uh, puckers up, and you can see you have a well-rounded... Uh, and do you call that a six or an eight bow wreath? What do you call that? This is a ten loop. Ten loop, okay. Six in the back, four in the middle. And about four and a half yards, depending on how long you want the string. And how large the, uh, the petals are, too. This could be done the same way you know, with only three loops, two okay. in the back, one in the middle, which make a small bow. Okay. But this is a fairly big wreath, and so we have got this. And you just wrap it around. Here. We're going to tie it up, not too tight, because a lot of people like to change ribbon, and we do change ribbon. However, that could change the price of the uh, wreath because say for instance this is a two dollar yard bow mm -hmm. the one on that huggy over there is a five dollar a yard bow okay so that will make the difference as what it goes now this wreath is, is going to be as it's an beautiful. oval wreath oh yeah look at with that with natural color now why would somebody want an oval wreath like to that to go in the door knocker maybe in the middle okay just to go maybe even on the side of a door around a lamp mm -hmm. that may be here mm -hmm. or just for a different shape Right. And you do make a lot of custom order wreaths. We do a lot of custom order, from very simple to very uh, bright and gay. Now, that wreath over there is, I did, which is a half wreath. Let me grab that. This would be on the door for those that want to be a little more, more advent guard, maybe, or it would go around a door knocker. See, like this, yeah. like a half moon made crescent. with a smaller, smaller bow. bow on it. This ribbon is narrower with a gold back. We have all types of ribbon. That's nice. Here in all different price ranges. Yep. And then that reminds me of the mailbox huggy. Let me go grab right. that. Do you want to finish the mailbox huggy, Annie? Is yeah. this done? 
no, I was going to put some rose hips on it. Okay, maybe we can just bring the camera over here. So this is a popular thing people do as well, is yes. put this around their mailboxes at the end of their driveway. Right. And I'm noticing this is uh, backed with uh, that's tape. That's a wet frame. Right. Why don't uh, you talk about how that works? That's sphagnum moss that you can put into a frame, wrap it with plastic tape. And this will actually keep the greens in there fresh up until Easter. And it kind of freezes it along freezes with the weather and in, maintains the moisture. They get moisture. Uh, we like we do a lot of holly wreaths. We used to make a lot of these frames. They are expensive to do, right? But we still have a lot of orders for holly wreaths, and that's one of the best way to keep holly fresh. Okay, but you were working on a dry wreath. This actually is on one of those. That's frames. one of those that two. That half okay. one is one of those frames. Let yes. me bring this over. We can talk about centerpieces. I don't even know what you call this. That is the base for a boxwood tree. Okay, so this is for a boxwood tree and we have a finished one. For the house. And they come in all different colors and forms. This is what we use for our fresh boxwood. And I believe we're going to have a class on this coming up. Okay. Where people are going to come in and uh, can make their own boxwood tree. I bet that's popular. People coming in and doing it themselves and we charge a fee for that we for the materials. We charge a fee for the materials right. to do. And they can go decorate it, anything we, you want. We have all these different things that mm -hmm. we'll have available for them when they come in to decorate the tree. And the only thing is that this too will last for about four weeks in the house. If you remember when you water, don't just fill this dish up because you have this big piece of foam coming up here. You need to water from the top. I can feel so, this is wet, so. Right, but feel out here. Very wet down here, drier up here. Right, right. So when you water, you need to water from the top. Okay. And so this will remain moist. So this should be in a bigger bowl. No, you're it saying. won't matter. Oh, it won't matter? The no, water will stay? because this is so high. Oh, okay. This will hold it. It will always be very moist from here down. Okay. But from here up, so when you add more water to it in the house once or twice a week, you need to water it from the top so this stays moist. Right here. Just right put it right in there. the top. Yes. And just trickle it down so it just doesn't leak. Just trickle it down. Okay. Yes. Now these we do spray. Remember, this is boxwood. It's one of the broadleafed evergreens. So boxwood, holly, holly things like that you need to spray. And any of these you need to spray. And the easiest thing for the homeowner is so that sprayer wilt proof. Wilt proof. That will hold And them you're not as worried about the uh, spraying with the evergreens, no. more the broadleaf. No. Okay. No. We are one of the few places, or probably the only place, that we dip all our wreaths in wilt proof. Oh. So they won't dry out. Okay, that makes a big Before difference. Before they go out, it makes a big difference. Right. When we went from doing all wet wreaths to using these dry wreaths, mm -hmm. we dipped them in wilt proof. Okay, yeah, I know and it's almost a full time job here. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great, Henry. I think you showed a good cross section of decorations for the holidays. And, um, oh, that's right, we're going to talk about a couple more oh, things. And this then we'll go is outside. one of our winter baskets that we do with a lot of Thanks, fresh man. assorted greens that we have here. Uh, and we have a wide range of pine cones that uh, we use ourselves here, including the one from this Japanese white, white pine, pine out on the corner. Is that what these are right here? There is, no, that is a Norway spruce. Okay. The Japanese white pine cones is this here. We've oh, yeah. cut some branches off to use the yep. green. Yeah. We are very fortunate to have uh, in here too some uh, blue atlas cedar from oh, yeah. our own big trees that we use that will give a nice texture and, and a very modern flair to uh, centerpieces and other things. Don't cut, so don't cut too much. Loose. I think we want to sell this one next year. <laughs> no, that's from the ones out front. Oh, okay. We pruned the big <laughs> oh, ones. Oh, yeah, the big one. Yeah. No, we don't touch the little ones. So this is a very nice piece. It's got a good color combination. Why don't right. you just talk about what you have uh, in, in We here. put wet sand in here. Okay. To moist, and you can keep it. It freezes in to hold it. We have fir tucked in here. Mm -hmm. yep. We have white pine. We have uh, cryptomeria. Yep, that's the Japanese, Japanese cedar. cedar. Uh, thread cypress. Right, this one's cryptomeria, or is this no, that is gold spangle? Philif this is philifera aurea. This is gold spangle. Okay. These are frosted pine cones uh, and, and then winterberry. The berries really do hold up pretty well, don't they? They do, until the birds get them. Yeah. 
but when they're in here and they're in a little moisture, it's mm -hmm. a great thing to work with. And this and is designed for the outside. For the outside, or you could use it inside too, okay. because you need to put a saucer under it. Right. Uh, initially, they started out as just being for the cemetery. Right. But we call them winter baskets rather than memorial baskets because they're great to have on a deck or a patio or a mm -hmm. stone wall mm -hmm. or on your front stairs. It will say fresh. Yeah. Now this is something too. If you have a big urn near your door that you've had annuals in all summer, right? You can rather than remove the urn, you can come and get an assortment of greens and put sand and in the urn the put same sand way. Sand in yeah. the urn and give as much height. We have several urns out here done that we do and. People bring them in, and we also do them here for them to take home. Let's go take a look outside at the urns and some of the live plants for All the right. holidays as well. That was great, Henry. Thank you. All right. So in our hands, Henry, we've got a couple things we didn't talk about inside. And one is this roping, this pine roping. Right. This it's is about 25 yards of roping I'm it holding, is. right? It's very flexible, probably one of the easier ones to curl. We have about six or seven different varieties of roping from Mount Laurel to fir to cypress and cedar. Uh, this is good for both indoors and outdoors okay. to wrap over. I wouldn't put over a fireplace, No. but uh, railings and doorways and things if you want that nice fresh smell of green. We put it right over our outside door too, right. another good spot. And mailbox, yeah, with your yep. huggy over the top, and we have a lot of kissing balls. These were made popular in Williamsburg era. We put ribbons underneath, berries, cones on here, and some artificial miss mistletoe because it used to be able to stop and kiss your sweetie on the street in Williamsburg because okay. they had all these uh, kissing balls, and they come in boxwood also. Okay. Yep, so you decorate these very different. similarly to the other things. Correct, with long streamers hanging down on them. Let me hang this up. And then we're going to talk about some live plants. Um, let's start way over here. Right. This is a container that was just spruced up around the outside, but the middle part, this dwarf Alberta spruce, is permanent. Right, it is permanent. Now we have Alberta spruce, and if you look here, we have a blue juniper that is done the same way. And this was full of annuals earlier, then there were some small mums for the fall, mm -hmm. and then once they come out, we stuck it with fresh cut greens. It's in soil, this is, not in sand. Okay, yeah. There is some nice dark soil in here, but it holds the moisture. And you could do this in sand if you didn't have this living in it. Correct. You would do this in sand. And the same assortment, whatever you would like to put in there whether you want just white pine and berries, whether you want more yellow or more blue around to pick the blue up of the urn, there's no limit to what you can do and right. put in here with your fresh greens. Right. I really like the idea of something permanent. And they will the stay fresh until almost Easter time. Okay, okay. Here. And other things that could be uh, purchased for the holidays in terms of live plants, what do we have here, a fir? We have fir, here is one of those junipers, dwarf blue spruce, uh, holly, variegated holly, some dwarf conifers back in here. Now let's Boxwood. talk about, out of these plants here, we all know the dwarf, dwarf Alberta spruce is a tough plant that can live through the winter in these conditions in Massachusetts. The blue spruce should be able to survive that blue as well, right? The spruce will survive. The boxwood will also survive. Some varieties, not some all. Some varieties, not the dwarf English. Okay. Uh, or any of the real dwarfs, but the okay. other boxwood should have no problem. And the juniper is fairly and hardy. And the juniper will too. Okay, so all good ideas for live plants right. for your urns. But it also depends what you can put in on the size of the bowl of the urn. Right. Because the bigger the ball and dirt around it, the more protected it's going to be. Right. Now you can also buy insulated pots that we have that oh. are more fiberglass in nature, in urn-shaped, or more unusual shapes. And plants uh, will have better survivability. Do, they will survive, but not ceramic. Right, right, right. Ceramic is not the way to do. And then we have some little miniature plants. Some of these aren't really miniatures. They will grow up to be bigger, but they're small size. And what, are people, what are people doing with these and around these the holidays? And these are great to give as uh, gifts to a shut-in, take to a hospital over flowers. Uh, we put foil around them, or we can wrap them in burlap like mm -hmm. we have done here. Mm -hmm. 
uh, with a bow on it. Uh, they use them as gifts if you're having a party, so all your guests, one per family, could go home Take with something home. as remembrance of the party. I like it better than cut flowers that don't last very long. The garden. That's and true. if you take care of these inside the right way, which I think you want to acclimate them back to the outside if you want right. to give them a chance to live in the spring. Right. If you're not too good at watering, I would say it's best to move them out into a cool place, a breezeway, a cellarway or something, mm -hmm. uh, because they are dormant. They don't need a lot of sun to be good and they should look like this so you can put them out into your garden in the springtime. Good. That okay, way. well that's a good assortment of live plants uh, to purchase for holiday decoration purposes. We're going to go in and pick a... And, and then Oh here, yeah, before we do. Uh, this is an urn that was completely filled with annuals. Now it is full of sand. Okay. Uh, this is curly willow that we have sprayed. Right. They're red. There again, white pine, berries, there is some reserve holly, mm -hmm. which we have sprayed. So it will be arborvitae, cypress, cedar, boulevard cypress, mm -hmm. to give a nice collection. And if you water this at least once a week until it freezes tight, this too should stay fresh until Easter time. Okay, so this is the option with nothing living, but they're all, in a sense, they're living. Yes, indeed. And they're gonna stay alive for quite a while. Right. Let's go inside real quickly and take a look at a few indoor plants. Mm -hmm. all right. Uh, these make great gifts. Uh, these have the pot and everything in them. These are amaryllis mm -hmm. in all different colors and shapes and sizes. You can also buy, if you have a pot, uh, the bulb yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, the bigger the bulb is, that the more blooms you're going to have from it. And you can see that even though this one is not potted, the flower bud has already started to come up. And here's another bud here. The leaves will come in between. And uh, you only plant these halfway up. They're good for two or three years. Uh, the secret is, once the flowers go by, is to cut them off and feed them once a week with a blossom booster fertilizer. Even after you cut Even the flowers after. off? Because okay. he, feel that bulb, you mm -hmm. can see how firm it is. Yeah. Now feel this one, you can see it's getting a little soft right. because the flower bud is in there and it's taking the nourishment out of the bulb. Okay. So the whole secret is to put it in a deep pot, grow this and feed it, so this bulb will get back to this size or even larger. Okay. And that's what this done through the foliage and the feeding. So and amaryllis is a classic holiday gift or correct. flower. And I also see that they plant them mostly in sand substrate, right, no, isn't it? halfway in soil, light potting oh, soil. Oh, it's just regular soil? Yes, okay. halfway. Uh, the paper whites are the ones that get in sand and stone. Those are sand. Okay. And that's just a one-shot deal. Oh, right. And that is it. But this is a great uh, gift, uh, even if you have it started this right. way, Father. Right. You could even wrap this up in a nice little bag, no pot, and let them pot them up themselves. So amaryllis is... What we end up spending most of our time talking about because it really is kind of a classic holiday and they're gift. Enormous blooms. They can be 10, 11 inches across. I know. Across it's always so surprising to see that when it five emerges. Blooms per stem. Right. Hi. Uh, the season to be jolly is almost upon us, and a great many of us celebrate with. Uh, cut greens and a variety of uh, cut materials, cut plant materials to decorate our houses and uh, I thought maybe it'd be worth giving a few tips on how to help those uh, materials stay nice and fresh for the length of time that you're going to need them. Basically, it depends on what material you're talking about. You've got anything from a cut Christmas tree to greens and garlands or maybe a wreath or maybe a flower arrangement for uh, the table. And so depending on what that material it is, you might treat it differently. Let's talk about cut Christmas trees for a minute. The single biggest thing that you have to keep in mind is that when you bring it home, it needs a fresh cut at the bottom and it needs to go into water as soon as humanly possible. You'll be amazed by how much that tree can suck up water now that it's had the chance to drink again. It's been disconnected from the planet for probably well over a month and shipped from somewhere. 
So need to check the water in that container, the reservoir and tree stands is real small. Probably check it twice a day. Keep your tree or any live greens, if at all possible, away from real bright light or from any direct source of heat. So a fireplace um, is kind of a difficult place for anything. Uh, near a radiator or a heat vent, if you can avoid that. If you can keep your rooms at about 70 degrees or cooler, that's a great idea too, because it keeps those materials from losing as much water through their surfaces. Um, materials that are put in oasis, so like in a flower arrangement where there's that foam sort of material at the center of the arrangement, that's something that you just need to water regularly the same way that you would water a bouquet. If you're talking about outdoor greens, those that are hanging on a shadier side of the house are going to do better in the long run than those on the sunnier side. So you want to put a wreath out on the sunny side of your house, you might want to buy an anti-transparent spray. One uh, brand name is Wiltproof. We've talked about it before. It's kind of like chapstick for plants. Make sure that you spray it on and let it dry in the sun. It won't be tacky at all. You can also use Wiltproof or any anti-transparent for indoor greens as well. That's great for something like garland that doesn't have a chance to sit in water and soak up additional water through its stems. So again, spray it, let it dry completely, and you won't have that tackiness problem that if you use it too soon, um, uh, it can be kind of sticky. Let it dry completely, preferably in the sun, and you won't have that problem at all. Uh, so that's just really a couple of tips. Basically, the concepts are keep it moist and keep it cool and try if you can to keep it not in the blazing hot sun and happy holidays. Well, thank you for watching today's show. That was a lot of stuff to cover and I hope you learned a lot. I sure did. Uh, there's a lot you can do for the holidays. Uh, you can do a lot yourself. You can go to your local garden center and purchase a lot of products as well. So I hope you got some good ideas, and if you have any topics you'd like to see us cover in the future, please send us an email, or if you'd like Anne to cover any topics, please send us an email about that as well. So thank you, and we'll see you again next time.